Greetings, this is Ra from the Encyclopedia team. It is with great pleasure we have Dr. Valentine James joining us for this interview. Thank you very much for coming, Dr. James. It's a pleasure to be here. I, I'm really delighted to join you. So, Dr. James, please tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, as, I, as you know, my name is Valentine James, and I'm a professor in the Department of Geosciences here at Pennsylvania Western University. I, um, I teach um, sustainable development. I teach planning the human environment, conservation. And I also teach geography classes that address the matters of sustainable development and address conservation of natural resources. I have been at this university for about 14 years and I've been doing some research and writing. I have written about 17 books. I am the editor in chief of a journal titled The Journal of Sustainable Development in Africa. And I also serve on a number of academic journals, about nine or 10 of them all together. And through this, I've been a kind of advancing the subject of sustainable development and sustainability. Thank you for the introduction, Dr. James. Could you please briefly introduce sustainable development and sustainability? Sustainable development has been around for quite some time. Uh, we first started in 1972 trying to address matters of housing, and we were quite shocked that the majority of people in the world do not have adequate housing. And in 1978, there was another convention that began to address the matter of carrying capacity, which is the amount of uh, use that a resource can withstand before it begins to deteriorate in quality and quantity. And so sustainable development then began to wrestle with questions of really dealing with matters of trying to make sure that there is intergenerational equity. That is to say that one generation in its attempt to meet its needs does not deny future generations the opportunity to meet their own needs. And so we became, each generation became a custodian of the natural resources for the coming generation. Sustainability, on the other hand, deals with matter of sustaining programs, projects, and policies that help us to move forward in our attempt to be sustainable. We have had a number of scholars dealing with matters of sustainable development over the years, but you know, institutions have more or less been at the very center of the kind of moving the theory of sustainable development and sustainability to really operationalizing those concepts so that people can begin to see how they can preserve their resources, how they can use their resources in perpetuity, because that's the whole aim. The aim is to use our resources forever, if we can do so, and to make sure that we do not exceed uh, the assimilative capacity of our natural systems, and we do not exceed the regenerative capacity of our natural system. The struggle between development and conservation has always been man's main problem. As our populations increase exponentially, we begin to know that in our production and our consumption, we are actually hurting our environment. And so what we're beginning to do now, come up with new methods of making sure that when we tap our resources, we are cognizant of them being around and when we have new technology, we are cognizant of the consequences those new technologies would do on our natural systems. And so we are really trying now to make sure that there's a balance between our use and conservation, and also to have our theories about sustainable development to actually be recognized the fact that we have to really contain you know, the impacts, the negative impacts on the natural systems. Thank you. So what made you want to research this subject in the first place? Are you influenced by other people? I am certainly influenced by a number of scholars who have been before me. The list of names goes from David Pierce, for instance. Uh, there is this, you know, Robert Goodland. There is Robert Ripetto. And of course, there, there's the work of people like Rachel Carson, who have been at the very center of really telling us about the whole idea of you know, development and the impact on the environment. But 
it is the idea of moving the frontiers of ignorance in the field. Uh, sustainable development, it's not that old if you really look at it. Uh, and there are a number of people who have actually been trying to advance it. But I think the people who really uh, own um, the idea are institutions, institutions like the United Nations, uh, who have actually been at the forefront of setting up conventions such as the United Nations Conference on Environment and Development that occurred in 1992 in Rio de Janeiro. And they established Agenda 21. And from that came this whole idea behind what the World Conference on Environment and Development, um, our common future, that document really actually put forward the idea that we should be very, very concerned about our impact on the environment. These institutions and those individuals that I've mentioned have really influenced me, but I have to give credit to my mentor mm -hmm. when I was doing my postdoctoral education at University of California, Davis. Um, Christine Chanel Cox, uh, a biologist, was the one who actually opened my eyes on how we should conserve our natural resources. And she was able to actually teach me how to write and think critically about you know, natural resources. And so I congratulate her. But when I say institutions, I had um, a postdoctoral work that I did when I was at uh, University of uh, Virginia professor. I had an opportunity to be given a, kind of like an award which was a triple AS you know, award, which is American Association for the Advancement of Science. I was on loan from University of Virginia. I was in Washington and I was advising the government. And that opportunity led me into traveling to Africa to see the funded projects uh, by United States government. So African countries to kind of sustain their resources. It was really the impetus for me to try to make sure that I do some things that would enable developing countries to sustain their natural resources. So I, I'm thankful for them for having given me the impetus, for having given me the opportunity to begin to influence some of the things that I'm doing now. I, like I said, I have written I, and I've given lectures and I teach about sustainable development and I continue to push the envelope. One of the ways that I'm trying to actually expand the discussion on sustainable development is making sure that there are new scholars in my journal, the Journal of Sustainable Development uh, in Africa, I bring African scholars to the fore of understanding that their scholarship can actually address community level kinds of issues when people use real resources and they, they can actually marry the new techniques uh, of really discussing sustainable development with you know, traditional techniques, which we call indigenous knowledge systems. All societies have indigenous knowledge systems. And what I'm trying to do now is bring those together so that we can have the best results in all communities across the globe. Thank you. So Dr. James, it makes me wonder, what is the innovative part about your research and how is your work different from the previous findings? Well, what, what sets my work apart is that I'm quite cognizant that there is, uh, there is the importance of collaboration and cooperation. We don't have enough of it. And so I've been extending my, uh, my efforts around the world. I've been to China six times, you know, I, and I've worked in places like Shidu. Uh, I've, I've worked at Chinese Academy of Forestry uh, and I've done all that. So collaborating with other people is really what my work is all about. And writing with other scholars, addressing new paradigms. Uh, there is something called a meta ways of doing sustainable development. That is to say, we have a multidisciplinary approach to address the matter of sustainable development. It's not one discipline that can solve the matter for us, but the other, bringing people of different backgrounds and try to solve the world's problems. Because if you really look at it, one discipline cannot do it all. It is when we bring ourselves together to understanding that you know, global issues are really community issues, and we go from the local level to the international level. I think my work is based on collaboration, it's based on rigorous writing, it's based on rigorous research individually, but also collaborating. I, I think that is very, very important if we are to address the global problems of sustainable development and sustainable. Thank you. So what difficulties did you encounter in your research and how did you resolve them? The difficulty has always been finding funding. No matter what we do, in order to expand our ability to resolve these issues, 
and to do research and to hold conferences, we have to have funding. As you know, the world has been going through some kind of economic crisis. It used to be that we'll have funding that would enable us to do our individual research and our findings. Uh, it is not as easy as it used to be. I think with more monies from government funding and from private sector, we can actually do more. I, what I've done is that I have always looked for monies from private sector, not just governmental research funding. I do that. But I think when we open ourselves up to getting funding for our research, holding conferences, holding seminars, and with a lot of support, I've also gotten my institution to be quite interested in what I do. I, and that's actually how I've been able to kind of get around that difficulty of funding for my research and funding for collaboration, making sure that I kind of detail my research with the research that other scholars are doing. I read uh, a lot and I look for people who are doing similar things and I collaborate with them. One of the things that have actually helped me is that by being the editor-in-chief of several academic journals, I'm exposed to a number of scholars across the globe and they're always giving me insight. When I see somebody who's doing something close to what I'm doing, I'm contacting that person. I'm saying, wait a minute, I, I know you're doing this. Can you tell me a little bit more? I think communication has been my, the key to my success as a scholar, making sure that I reach out to people and I also ask a question, particularly uh, addressing questions that pertain to young people, informing and educating them. And I think that's the way I've been trying to kind of avert the problems and, of, of not knowing that people are carrying on the war. I am sure future research will be needed in sustainable development, and I hope you will get continued funding. So it makes me wonder, is there a next move for this research from you? Oh yes, there is quite a next move. And the next move is going to the grassroots, um, informing and educating people across the globe. I'm trying to reach people at the grassroots because um, the environmental issues that we are confronting are becoming part of poor societies in the attempt to kind of make the society work for them. They're trying to grow crops where God never intended us for, for us to do in the first place. And because of poverty is exacerbating the problems of environmental degradation. We used to think that the core countries, that is the rich countries or the industrialized countries were the ones that are really good to, yes, they are, but we have to make sure that we also address the questions of the poor. So my work is now embracing the views of, you know, local people. Uh, I just returned this summer from, from Nigeria where I was doing some work and I'm beginning to see that they want answers to the environmental issues. Uh, they want how to know how they can mobilize efforts. And so I'm putting them in touch um, and I'm staying in contact with them. Many of them ask questions about, you know, what to do. And I, I just keep informing them. I build relations without relations from local level to uh, the national level to the international level. Sustainable development is not going to work. But I also pay attention to the efforts of the United Nations. I pay attention to uh, the efforts of the non-governmental organizations because non-governmental organizations have something to do about sustainable development because they understand the kinds of impacts that multinational corporations are having on our environment. Uh, the oil companies, you know, they'll go to places where they can get away with, you know, not paying their dues and not taking care of the environment. I think by actually addressing things and at the grass levels and actually educating people and informing the governments through my work, it is making a difference. I give you one a good example. Uh, a few years ago, I was in a very small society community in Nigeria, and I'd written this book called Africa's Ecology. And I was asked to kind of give a talk about you know the uh, gas flurry problems in that southeastern part of Nigeria. I was really shocked that nobody had read that. And the book was addressing the problem of environmental degradation and sustainability in that. I think what we are not doing enough is about dissemination of information. How do we spread what we write? That's the next phase of my research. Spreading the word, getting information, whatever we're doing to people, and actually looking for ways that they can actually get access to the kinds of you know, cutting edge research that is happening 
across the globe. And I think that's what the next frontier for my work is how to actually to spread the word. Thank you, and I wish you the best of luck. So before we finish, is there any acknowledgement you'd like to make? Yeah, I, I, I did, the, what I would like to make is, you know, a, a comment that is so important. And that, and that is to understand that the world, it, nobody's living in a vacuum anymore. We're all sharing the same world. Uh, and, and so we should find ways of collaborating. We should find ways of working together. Uh, we should find ways of communicating to where to people where that have the power to scholars, and I think that's so important. Uh, scholarship by itself would not solve our problems. Is getting what comes out of our research to where it is needed. That is what you know. My advice is distributing that information, understanding where the global problems are, and addressing them. Finding ways of marrying our research with you know what's going on out there i think universities have a role to play this is this is my comment i'm talking now about my to my colleagues to say no matter what your field of research is there's always the issue of sustainable development and sustainability you have to sustain our world and whatever we are doing whether it is geology whether it is chemistry whether it is physics it's about sustainability because everything that we do uh, in today's world it's you know impacting the global society. That's where the effort is. That's my advice for us to work together. I think that's really key, regardless of what one's discipline is, to find ways of developing a common language that would enable us to share ideas, but enable us to solve really critical global problems. Without sustainable development and sustainability, I think we are going to be chasing our tails. That's where the real solutions are. Whether we're talking at a local level, we're talking at national level, regional level, or global level. Sustainable development is here to stay, and it will solve our problems. I totally agree that we should work together for our future generations. So we wish you and your fellow colleagues the best of luck on your future research. And thank you again for joining us, Dr. James. Thank you so much. It's, a, it's been a pleasure being with you.